In this video, I will be discussing section number 13 until section number 17 of the chapter 7 of the volume 1 of the Government Accounting Manual for National Government Keeping. So, section 13 is about financial liability. Uh, we all know that when we say financial liability, there is a contractual obligation to pay or to deliver uh, cash or other financial assets. So in government accounting, uh, financial liabilities arises when the national government agencies make a transaction with other um, party resulting to the existence of accounts payable, bail bonds payable, or when we say bail bonds payable, ito yung um, para siyang shorty bond, ano, uh, example niyan ay halimbawa merong defendant sa isang uh, kaso. And of course, may mga hearing ng magaganap. Merong mga bail bond na ibibigay itong uh, tao na to sa government at uh, yung bond na yun ay somehow um, sinasabi doon na that particular person will attend in the or will appear in the court hearings you know lahat ta attended niya so in the case na hindi niya na attendan yung bail bond or yung bail na um yung bail bond na kanyang ibinigay sa government kay government ayon but just in case uh nag-appear sa lahat ng uh, hearings yung tao na yun. So, the government will have this responsibility to, to refund it. Uh, so, ibalik talaga yan sa uh, tao na nagbigay ni shorty bond or no bail bond. So, kapag ka ganun, that is the time na nag-recognize siya ng bail bonds payable. And all other uh, liabilities naman here are somehow very familiar to us because it is also applicable in uh, commercial accounting. So, it includes not only those uh, liability to local or domestic, but also in foreign. Uh, please take note that this financial liability is, of course, accounted at the Bureau of Treasury. In Section 14, recognition of financial liability, so just like the financial asset, uh, meron din mga uh, conditions na kailangan mo need for a financial liability to be recognized in the statement of financial position. Uh, just like the financial asset, uh, it will be recognized when the entity becomes a party in the contractual provisions. That is in accordance with paragraph 16 of PPSAS 29. Um, however, alam naman natin na ang financial liability ay giving rise to a contractual obligation to deliver cash or another financial asset. But there are instances na hindi man explicitly na establish yung delivery ng cash or other financial asset. Still, we recognize it as a financial liability if the following um, conditions or terms exist. So, sinasabi dito sa letter A, a financial instrument may contain a non-financial obligation that, that must be settled if and only if the entity fails to make distributions or to redeem the instrument. So, ang letter A, ang sinasabi dito is that, yes, first and foremost, there must be an obligation to, a contractual obligation to settle or to deliver cash or another financial asset. But, other uh, could be indicated doon so or there is an indication doon sa financial instrument na sinasabi na if the entity fails to make that distribution or to redeem the instrument, ibig sabihin, fails to deliver cash or another financial asset, nakalagay doon sa instrument na there could be a non-financial obligation, meaning meron pa rin dapat isasettle doesn't it not necessarily mean na kailangan mong mag-deliver ng cash or ng other financial asset. Okay? So, kapag ka ganyan ang scenario, kahit hindi specifically nakalagay yung delivery of cash or other financial asset, it will still be classified as financial liability. Okay? Because there is a need to settle non-financial obligation. 
ibig pong sabihin, ang financial instrument, masasettle yan either kapag ka nagbayad ka ng cash or other financial as, uh, asset that's the, the general tool. But the entity can also settle it by delivering its own shares. Ibig sabihin, own shares of entity concern. Its value must be determined to exceed substantially the value of the cash or other financial asset. So, um, in this case, the government agency or the entity does not have an explicit contractual obligation to deliver cash or other financial asset. The value of the share settlement alternative is such that the entity will settle in cash. Okay? So, anong nangyari? Hindi nagbayad ng cash, hindi nagbayad ng financial asset, ang pinangbayad yung own shares ng entity. So, that is non-financial um, settlement. Okay? Section 15, initial measurement of financial liabilities. So yung tatandaan lang dito, katulad lang din yan ng uh, financial uh, asset. No? So on the point of view, noong financial asset, siya yung nagkaroon ng investment. On the point of view of the financial liability, siya yung nakareceive ng investment from other parties. So kagaya lang din nung napag-usapan doon sa financial asset, ang financial liability will be initially recognized at fair value. Okay? Fair value yan if it is accounted for as uh, yung at fair value through deficit or surplus or deficit. Okay? Pero if it is not accounted for as at fair value through surplus or deficit, isasama mo yung transaction cost. Right? This is the same as that of the financial asset. Yun nga lang on the point of view of the, financial, of the party na, na nagkaroon ng financial liability. Okay? Um, if it is uh, the transaction cost, capitalizable yan kapag ka not at fair value. Okay? Pero kapag ka at fair value, expense natin. Okay. For financial liability measured at amortized cost, transaction cost din po ay included in the initial measurement. Ano yung mga transaction cost? So those are directly attributable cost to the issue or disposal of the financial liability. Meaning, uh, that is the those are examples of cost na hindi mo naman may incur kung hindi ka nag-issue, for example, ng funds or kung hindi ka nag-dispose ng financial liability. Right? So here is the example ng atin pong uh, initial recognition. So if you will notice here, um, in this case, uh, the value of the, or the face value of the fund na in-issue ng Bureau of Treasury is uh, 100,000. Uh, it is being issued at 95,787.63. So it is issued below its face value. So therefore, dahil mas mababa sa face value, it is being issued at a discount. The interest rate is uh, 5%. Uh, the prevailing interest rate is 6%. So nagbayad din ng uh, 34,000 uh, bond ish, uh, one issue cost. So, ito yung uh, transaction cost related to the issue once of the financial uh, liability. The financial liability was measured at amortized cost. So, kung amortized cost yan, paano natin i-record or ano ang ating uh, journal entry dito? Okay? So, A debit to the cash in bank okay uh, 
uh, of course, kasi nag-issue ang Bureau of Treasury ng bonds, kaya naka-receive siya ng pera uh, at the uh, issued price. <clears throat> and then a debit also to the discount and a credit to the bonds payable uh, yung domestic na credit, I know, that's a liability. And then bond issue cost domestic, uh, that's uh, a debit also and a credit to the cash in bank kasi nagbayad ng 34,000. So dito, ang bond issue cost domestic, it is not classified as an expense. Please take note, ang sinabi ng problem, the financial liability was measured at amortized cost. Sabi dito sa taas, um, for financial liability measured at amortized cost, transaction costs are included in the initial measurement. So pag pumunta ka dito, you recognize siya as part of the financial liability. Ma'am, paano mo nalaman na recognize as a financial liability, bond issue cost po yan? Because if you will look at the account code, it starts with number two. And number two represents liabilities. Okay, um, bond issue costs as stated are not treated as outright expense, but they are also amortized over the life of the bond similar to the amortization of the discount on bonds payable. Okay, uh, what else? The amortization of the bond issue cost is just like an amortization of the discount you debit the interest expense and you credit the bond issue cost using the, of course, um, effective interest method. For section 16, subsequent measurement of financial assets. So, of course, after the initial recognition, the next question is how are we going to uh, measure it subsequently in our financial statements um, in the coming periods? So, the financial liability shall be measured at amortized cost using the effective interest method. Um, amortized cost here meaning the financial liability, uh, yung kanyang initial recognition, yung measurement niya during the initial recognition, you will deduct the principal repayments and you add or deduct the cumulative amortization. So bakit may plus or minus chart? Kasi of course, just like commercial accounting, bonds can be issued either at the premium or at the discount. So kung uh, issued yan at the discount, idadagdag mo yung um, idadagdag mo yung amortization ng discounts on bonds payable. Pero kung yan ay premium, babawas mo yung amortization. Okay. Uh -huh. So the difference between the face amount and the present value of the financial liability is amortized through the interest expense using the effective interest method. So this is an example. Um, let us say the face value of the bond is 100,000. Ibig kong sabihin, um, at the end of the term, no, yung, in this example, five years, yung uh, carrying amount or book value ng fund ay equal sa so 100,000. Yung issue price or yung selling price na is 95. So again, there is a uh, discount of uh, or discount on bonds payable. The, and the nominal rate is 5% annually. So when we say the nominal rate, that is the rate indicated in the face or on the face of the face of the bond. Effective interest rate is, is 6%. So, there is an example of the schedule of amortization. So, hindi naman po ito kaiba doon sa commercial accounting. So, if you will look at this, the interest expense uh, is uh, fixed at uh, 5,000 5, pesos. Why? Because the interest expense here is equal to the 5% of the face value. No, face value will remain to be 100,000. So ito yung interest na binayaran. Okay? Yung interest expense naman, the 6%, so this is based on the effective interest rate and the the rate is to be multiplied doon sa carrying amount ng bonds. 
So, ito yung actual na interest expense. Okay? Ang, ang difference ng interest expense at saka yung interest paid dito sa, sa part na to, amortization yun ng discount. Okay? So, ibig sabihin ay uh, yung discount on bonds payable na na-recognize kanina ay ina-amortize throughout the life of the the bonds. I know and then of course uh, as the as the value of the amortization increases, bakit? Kasi of course tumataas ang uh, carrying amount every time nag-amortize ng bond discount. Uh, bumababa naman yun kung balance ng bond discount. Okay. And um, at the end of the five years na term noong bonds na yun, ang carrying amount na ngayon niya will be equal to its face value. So, how are we going to recognize it in the financial statements? So, pwedeng ang gawin mo, kuhanin mo yung face value, yung bonds payable, and then ibabawas mo lamang yung adjusted balance of the bond discount. No? So, eto. Like, for example, in the first year, yung balance na niya is 3,465. So, yun na yung gagamitin mo dito. Kasi nakatapos na ng isang taon. And then its uh, carrying amount will be 96,524 or 534 rather. Or you can uh, use the carrying amount, the running balance ng carrying amount at idadagdag mo na lang yung amortization ng bank discount. So whichever you think is more um, easy, easier para sa iyo. For section number 17, the last uh, section for this video, recognition, the recognition of financial liability. So, kailan natin inaalis sa libro natin or kinakancel or in-extinguish yung uh, financial liability. So, it ma the entity shall remove the financial liability or a part of it from the statement of financial position when it is already extinguished or when the obligation is discharged waived or cancelled or expired. So this is an example. The government entity paid uh, its 100 or 1 million loan from a local creditor. So in this case, ang government agency ay may utang. No? So nung binayaran, ang utang, of course, makakancel na yung loans payable, mababawasan yung pera. Ito naman sa pangalawa, the case here in the second uh, illustration is that um, instead na binayaran ng government entity, we name ng local creditor yung, yung liability. So kung we named nila, ang record natin sa libro natin or sa libro ng government agency, a debit to the loan and a credit to miscellaneous income. Wala kang binayaran na cash, nawalan ka ng utang, so it is to be credited as a miscellaneous income. Right, so that would be all for this video. Let's uh, have another video for the remaining uh, section of Chapter 7.